would have loved to have gathered together with you on this last Wednesday in Advent, uh, but the weather is going to prevent that. So I wanted to share with you a little bit of what God's Word had to say from Isaiah about heaven as we finish up our series. The first two weeks we looked at Isaiah 1-12 to and how heaven concerned the coming of the Messiah. And last week we looked at Isaiah 13-26 to of how heaven concerned the call to repent for every nation, regardless whether you're Christian, unchristian, Jewish, Gentile, it didn't matter. All people were called to repent. And in the section we want to look at tonight, from Isaiah 27 to 35, it's a section about God warning specifically Israel, that is specifically the believers, not to get comfortable just thinking that as long as we're in our pews, we're good Christians and we're saved, because it's not enough just to be associated with God's people, but it's about what's in your heart. Do you believe God's word, that he is the judge, that you are sinful, and that you need a Savior, and that Savior is the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ, the righteous King who will sit on the throne of David? Or do you think it's all about yourself? Well, the judgment from Isaiah 27 to 35 is all about the call to repentance. And so we see God saying, repent. For example, as we look at Isaiah chapter 27, actually, let's just look at 29 for the sake of time tonight. If you look at Isaiah 29, it says, Ah, Ariel, Ariel, the city where David encamped. And Ariel here is a Hebrew word for hearth, the place where you burn your fire, your fireplace. And he's referring to Jerusalem. But the reason he's referring to Jerusalem as the hearth, the place of the burning, is because this is the place of the sacrifice, the place of the temple. And here is this hearth, the burning lamp in Jerusalem, and yet some people only see this place of sacrifice as something to make you feel good. A place of nice and warmth where you can bring your hands up and warm your hands and your feet and feel comfortable. But that's not the way Jerusalem was intended. Jerusalem wasn't intended as the place to feel comfortable. Jerusalem was intended as the place to repent of your sins and to offer the sacrifice on the heart, the great golden altar, to God. And there in faith that this sacrifice was what God asked for, for the forgiveness of your sins, there you found the true meaning of Jerusalem, the city that means the peace of Yahweh. And yet he says, year to year the feasts run their round, yet I will bring distress to Jerusalem, and there shall be moaning and lamentations, and she shall be like unto me just a burning heart. And I will encamp against it all around it, and will besiege it with towers, and will raise siege works against it. Because God has seen those who have taken his religion, taken his sacrifices, and just made them into a thing to be comfortable. But that's not what God's word is about. Again in chapter 30, God calls the Israelites, You stubborn children! You carry out a plan, but it's not the Lord's. You make an alliance, but not with the Holy Spirit. We see in the time of exile, in the time of the massive persecution of Israel that God brought about for their suffering, that the people of Israel tried to ally themselves with Egypt, remembering that Egypt is the very place from whence they were delivered from the hand of the Pharaoh, that God brought them out, and yet here they're trying to seek protection from Egypt instead of from the Lord. Because to seek protection from the Lord would have meant that they had to repent of their sins, to cast out their false worship, and to submit themselves in humility to God. But they wouldn't do that. They tried to ally themselves with Egypt. And for that very reason, God brought upon them curses and plagues and destruction. And so God says in chapter 34, Draw near, O nations, to hear, and give attention, O peoples. Let the earth hear, and all that fills it, the world, and all that comes from it. For the Lord is enraged against all the nations, 
and furious against all their hosts, and he has devoted them to the destruction, has given them over to slaughter. And the slain shall be cast out, and the stench of their corpses shall rise. The mountains shall flow with their blood, and all the hosts of heaven shall rot away. It's a horrible, vengeful scene of God bringing his wrath upon those who did not seek his mercy. Because where there is not mer wrath, there is not mercy. And those who refuse to cling to God's mercy will only face his wrath. So it is that we know that the Messiah whom he sent, who died upon the cross for all of our sins, is the one who took the wrath of God from you, who stood in your place between God's wrath and you. And as such, he has taken the full wrath of God upon himself. But for all those who deny Christ, who seek to place themselves ahead of Christ, God's wrath comes fully upon you. And the only way to avoid God's wrath is to turn in repentance and to get behind Christ, to cover yourself up in Christ, just like we do in the washing of baptism, to cover ourselves in Christ, because that's what it's about. And so it is that for all of us who have covered ourselves in Christ, who have sought refuge from the wrath of God, we know that on the last day, heaven will be the place of God's peace and mercy, and not the place of his wrath. Now what's amazing is that as all of this builds up from chapter 27 to chapter 34, this message of wrath and mercy, of law and of gospel, of repentance and faith, comes to its head with this remarkable song in chapter 35, where Isaiah is told to prophesy, The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad, the desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. And the glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon, and they shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. It sounds like Eden. It is the Garden of Eden that God is prophesying that will pop up out even in the driest place, out in the desert. Even Sodom and Gomorrah will be wiped away at the last hour and be replaced with the beauty of the Garden of Eden. With no more thorns, no more thistles, no more pain, no more suffering, no more toil and hardship and the sweat of our brow. But there will be only peace 